This conference will now be recorded. Thank you so much, Laura. As Laura said, my name is Anna uh, Vanskoik. I work at the Hopewell Branch for the Mercer County Library System. Before we get started this evening, I wanted to let you know about an upcoming virtual program. On Monday, May 22nd at 7 in the evening, the library is hosting a virtual program, A Hyphenated Spirit, Ethnic Prejudice and Japanese American Incarceration, which will be presented by Anne Gilbert Gedact, who is an assistant professor of history at Seton Hall University. Dr. Gedact will investigate, investigate this dark chapter of American history, which resulted in the relocation of 117,000 people, including 17,000 US citizens based solely on their ethnic heritage. She'll explore the history behind why the US population in 1942 was willing to accept individuals of Japanese descent as a hyphenated spirit and therefore were denied their civil rights. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link to that program into our chat so you can take a look at that at your leisure after this evening's program, um, as well as remind you to uh, visit our online calendar uh, of events where you can locate other virtual programs as well as events taking place at all nine of the MCLS branches. And I'll put that link in there as well. But now let's get to tonight, which I'm very, very much looking forward to. This evening's program is History Uncovered, which is presented by Patricia Millen and Annette Erlane. Patricia Millen is a retired museum professional with a degree in American studies and education. She is the author of dozens of articles on 19th century American history and three books, including Baseball and the Civil War. Her most recent work, Washington Crossing, which was uh, published via Arcadia Publishing, uh, came out in 2022. It was while researching for this book that she uncovered the George Hardy mural, which is the topic of this evening's discussion. Annette Erling is a longtime volunteer at the Washington Crossing Park Association, uh, was recently hired as their first executive director. Her background is firmly rooted in graphic design with side gigs as an essayist and a jazz vocalist. So without further ado, I pass it off to you ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Annette, and this is Pat. Hello. And uh, we're very happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting us, Anna and Laura, for making this work. I'm going to do my best to not have our computer explode mm -hmm. on this. And I'm going to start sharing the screen and start the presentation. Um, Anna has said, I, she may have said this already, that um, if you have any questions, for us, type them into the chat and she'll ask them at the end of the presentation. So let's see if we can make this happen. All right. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to assume that everybody can see this. Anna, you'll let me know if there's a problem. All right, I'm going to start again. My name is Annette Erling. I'm the executive director of the Washington Crossing Park Association, also known as the WCPA. Our organization was formed in 2013. We have a mission to preserve, enhance, and advocate for the state park and the history it represents. We work to educate citizens and enrich their quality of life through knowledge of and exposure to the park. That's why we're so pleased to have been invited by the Mercer County Library System. We're excited to talk to you about one of the many projects we're working on here at this crossroads of history and natural beauty. This is an amazing tale of buried treasure. It features Mercer County history, military know-how, a long lost piece of art, and of course the main ingredient of the greatest breakfast sandwich of all time, pork roll. This tale begins and ends with this beautiful mural entitled Washington Crossing the Delaware by George Matthews Harding. It was rediscovered just two years ago by historian and WCPA founding trustee Patricia Millen here with me here with us tonight. Pat is a historian, a retired museum director and author, and I'm so pleased to be here with her. I'd like to hand things off to Pat so she can tell you about this incredible discovery. Thank you, Annette. Um, so this is the cover of the book that I was invited to be co-author on with my friend and colleague Robert Sands. 
on Washington Crossing, the first pictorial history of both sides of the park. And it was while researching this book, I was reading old type plans for the park that were done in 1972 and 1973. And in the park plans for the interpretation for the bicentennial of the park in 1976, they were talking about this George Harding mural of Washington Crossing the Delaware that was painted in 1921. And it said specifically that this mural was owned by the state of New Jersey. And it was to be showcased in the new visitor center museum that was being built at the park. Um, in 1976. And I worked at the park in 1976 and I wondered what happened to this mural. So that began this search. So if you haven't heard of George Matthews Harding, I had been introduced to his work in the 1990s. I was looking at military art and I, I knew who he was and I knew he was a pretty big deal. Uh, he was born in 1882 and he was an illustrator and he went, was one of Howard Pyle's students. And Howard Pyle is considered um, the father of Amer American illustrators and he actually opened a, a studio in a school in his home in Wilmington, Delaware. And if you, you probably would have heard of some of his students, but one of the most famous is N.C. Wyeth, was a student of his, of his in 1902. So Harding was um, working with him and he began work as an illustrator in 1903 for the Saturday Evening Post, and then Harper's Monthly in 1906, and went on to be a faculty member at a, a Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art. So that's a little background on him. Um, his work that you can find online, there's a lot of it. It's really quite stunning. He was chosen as eight of the uh, combat artists for World War I. And there, we believe he was chosen to be one of the combat artists um, because he had previously traveled the world. His work was really well known. Um, but he went, he went abroad, um, mostly in France. And um, they supplemented the photographic history of the war with their art. And he sketched in all kinds of conditions and foxholes. He wrote about being under fire. And what they did, they made these sketches in pencil and charcoal, and then made a permanent record um, off and back home with um, watercolor and oil. So if you study his work, um, you can see he had a fascination with detail and the technology of war. He has a lot of his images that have really um, intense pictures with airplanes and tanks and guns. And they're very, very detailed, um, which is what I love about his work. And what he learned from Howard Pyle, um, who told him at his school, be, be a storyteller, Let get involved in the story, get involved in the picture. And um, that's what you can see he did here. Sorry, my phone, I put it on silence and it's not being on <laughs> silence, it's being bad. Um, so after the war, so after the war, he went back and with a lot of public buildings being built at that time, especially during the Great Depression, uh, he began to work as a muralist and a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of businesses and government buildings asked him to sketch um, and put murals on it. This one is in the old uh, post office building in Washington, D.C. And um, it, his style here is a little bit more simpl simplified than it was with his war sketches. But in an, uh, in an interview he gave for the Pennsylvania History Magazine in 1953, he said he wanted to do a lot of research and get involved in um, local historical research. So the um, the details were correct because he knew thousands of people were going to be looking at these murals and he wanted to get all the details correct. So this is one example. And this is another. And um, it's really, really lovely work. Um, besides these government buildings, he did work for the panels for the 1939 World's Fair in New York, the Chrysler Building, um, and um, Oh, many, many. There's, there's, like I said, mentioned before. There's great, there's great um, listings of his work online. And he actually won a gold medal in 1953 for his mural work. Um, but after this, he was one of the few combat artists to go in both world wars. So he went back to do war sketches in um, 1942, and he was 60 years old at this time. And he completed 600 sketches on the spot in 20 months. Uh, but this is the work, this is the detail of his work that you'll see in the Washington Crossing mural. He, he learned to do slanted lines and to juxtapose the light with the dark to have this intense feeling of movement in his, in his work, which is, is really quite stunning. 
So the story that unfolded um, about the uh, Harding mural was really pretty much told in this entire clipping from the American Association of Conservators and Restorers. There's an old theater in Trenton being knocked down, and the owner of the theater called this group, the American Association of Conservators, are no longer in business, and um, the owner offered the mural to the state of New Jersey. And a group of 12 conservators under the guidance of Frank and Barbara Moratz came to rescue the mural, the Hardy mural that you can see over in the left-hand corner. Um, and included among the volunteers was a man named Bert Prawl, who was historian at Ringwood Manor State Park. Here's another article uncovered, actually Annette sent this to me from the New York Times, April 23rd, 1972. And this is really um, neat because you can actually see them working. They had to scrape the mural off the wall of the theater. And um, before they did that though, Barbara Murat stayed up all night and she made this conglomerate of wheat paste to protect the painting and then they put rice paper over it they rolled it up from the bottom down to keep it taut to keep it protected um, on this scaffolding and um, then it went on into storage supposedly out there somewhere and if any of the audience can help me find them i would love it this whole thing was filmed and there are photographs taken of it and there are none surviving that we can find so if you want to know the old theater, it was the Taylor Opera House. And um, this is on 18 South Broad Street in Trenton. It was built for 110,000 by a respected architect, a Trentonian named um, Harry Finch. And it was named an opera house very few operas that were ever presented there. It was an an Opera House because they wanted to distinguish themselves from CD burlesque theaters and things like that. So um, this is what the Taylor Opera House looked like before it was a movie theater. And these are some old vintage um, clippings um, from the theater. Uh, the owner was John Taylor of the Taylor Pork Roll fame. And um, his grandfather from the Revolutionary War supposedly invented, well, he did, <laughs> the mince ham recipe. Uh, there were some calls and critics of the theater in Trenton at the time. They were afraid it was going to be seedy, but they did uh, eventually say it could be maintained in the city <clears throat> without detriment if it could be carefully supervised. Hmm. And it did become a tryout theater for a lot of Broadway shows. And supposedly it was the first theater uh, to offer drinks in the lobby, and that's where the uh, mural was later on, of course. Um, but there are a lot of famous things that went on the Taylor Opera House, including the inaugural events for uh, George B. McClellan. Um, and he, yes, is a Civil War general who went on to be governor of New Jersey. Also Woodrow Wilson. And um, one of the things that's very ironic and a neat part of the story to me is also on October 12th, 1909, this was the setting and the scene of the first large meeting of dignitaries to decide and organize a memorial at Washington Crossing State Park. This is a view of the park um, a little after it opened. This is an aerial view taken in 1926. We actually have this in our book. But if you look down to the lower right-hand corner, is that their right-hand corner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see the Johnson Ferry House is still there. Over to the left in the bottom, you can see the um, old stone. You, you can see the Nelson House. Um, and this circular um, area overlooking the canal, this overlook area, which is what it was called, this was supposed to be the site of this huge bridge that went over. Um, and they, the, this one of the early plans called for this 100 foot wide uh, roadway down into Trenton with statuaries and trees. And this was part of this grand plan that never actually came to fruition. Um, but what's exciting about this view in the upper left hand corner will be the site of the new museum mm -hmm. for the 250th anniversary of our country. Um, where the George Harding mural will go where it never made it to the first museum, but it's going to make it to this one. So this is a um, Taylor Opera House was sold um, in the early 1900s um, and it became the RKO Capital Theater. Um, it was sold about, it was one of the great movie theaters in Trenton. There, there are many, many, many. It had 1,800 seats 
And it was the owner of the theater, Frank Storrs, who commissioned the Harding mural for the lobby, and that was in 1921. Unfortunately, this building was torn down for a parking lot for the Trenton Saving Fund Society in 1969. But um, if you go online about movie theaters in Trenton, you'll see all these great giant theaters and what a bustling city it was at the time. And it, uh, you can, I, I made two trips into Trenton to find this little monument to the Taylor Opera House put off by the Kiwanis Club. Um, it's in a parking lot. It's actually the actual um, address now, 16 South Broad Street. It's under those bushes. I, I pulled up some of the bushes to get a picture of it. But the Taylor Opera House stood there. If you look straight down that road, I'm not sure you can see it from the, the um, Trenton Battle, Battle Monument is down the road a bit there. Um, so. So again, back to the, the mural. So this is the big role that it was put on. And to give you an idea of, of the size of the mural and this giant tubing, the mural is 15, by, uh, five, uh, 15 feet, five inches by nine feet, eight inches. And it was rolled on this, onto this, put into a truck and transported to Ringwood State Park. And that's where it stayed from that point on. Um, I realized that it had gone there and it contacted the, um, the the historian of Ringwood Manor State Park and she went over to Skylands Manor and was nice enough to check to see if the mural was still there and indeed it was in the basement uh, surrounded by Christmas decorations. <laughs> So the question came up then, could it be saved being there almost over 50 years later? Um, so I really wanted to look at the mural, um, but I knew it, it was out of my purview at that time, but everyone had the same idea. Could it be saved? Um, it's in a stamp basement for all these years, covered with the sweet paste coating, um, still resting on sawhorses. It never made it into my book, but we'll show you a picture of it that we did find. So this is one of the few images. This was used over and over and over again. This is out of a book that um, the historians helped me find at the park, and I since learned more about it. Um, for the bicentennial of George Washington's birth, um, there was a federal commission put about to um, help facilitate uh, celebrations all over the country and they actually put together volumes of everything about George Washington then they put together an eight volume work all about everything that went on every image of George Washington crossing the Delaware George Washington here just about everything there are wealth of information you can find them online um, but this is a view uh, from from 1932 and you can see again the um, the intensity of his work, the slanted lines, the light and the dark to get this intense feeling of movement in this scene. But it was in that one of the reports of the George Washington's Bicentennial Commission that um, it actually um, reiterated that this photograph was taken and given to the commission by Frank Storrs who commissioned the mural. So we know the mural we have, that the, that story is complete and um we're working on more of it then so but uh let's i forget the next one is so then i had to turn it back over to the state park officials and washington crossing park association because it's up to them to see at that point what could be done with the mural yeah so i'm annette going to take over now the wcpa was thrilled to take this on pat um alerted us to the fact that one of the area's most respected art restorers is um, based just up the river in Lambertville. That's Crystal Cussworth of Cussworth Conservation. We had our first meeting with Chris in 2021 during um, pandemic meetings. You know, everything was on Zoom, of course, and you can see Chris on the lower left here. And on the lower right is our was our park superintendent at the time, Neil Ferrari. And then our, our treasurer is in the upper left, and here I am probably in bed on the upper right. There were a lot of hoops to jump through with the state of New Jersey, who are the owners of this painting. And um, we're really lucky that Michael Matrano here, you can see in the upper left again, uh, was here to, to, there to guide us through. Um, with approval of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, the WCPA engaged Chris to arrange for transportation from Ringwood Manor to a secure art storage facility at our expense. Chris carefully unrolled the painting and examined the painting. She measured it. It is exactly 15 feet, six inches by nine feet, eight inches, and determined that it was in fine shape considering its storage conditions. Uh, to our immense relief, it is suitable for restoration. 
and she was able to provide us with estimates for our six to $1,000 budget, which you can see here. Chris is a graduate of the College of New Jersey. She has more than 20 years experience in painting conservation. Her studio is at 34 Main Street in Lambertville. And here's a representative list of some of her clientele. We're so lucky to have her. The list here includes Trenton's Ellerslie Museum, Christie's Auctions of New York, and the avant-garde artist, Laurie Anderson. So uh, here's a good before and after example of what they're capable of in the studio. They, they, you know, dirt, varnish, airborne pollutants, they distort colors, but with the proper conservation techniques, it can, the results, the results are amazing. Uh, they can repair torn and punctured canvases. Damaged areas and areas of paint loss can be filled in and in painted using reversible uh, materials. Water damage, flaking, paint loss, shrinking, cracking, fungi, and insect infestations are all issues that they can address. It's really amazing. So now let's go back to the Harding mural as it was found after 50 years in its basement lair, half hidden with Christmas decorations. You'd see there was a bit of mold, but remarkably there was no insect or rodent damage considering that it was a feast of rice paper and wheat paste. That was my biggest fear, but it was, it's, amazing. The painting tube had not been designed to sit for half a century and had significantly bowed over time. So the painting was transported by a professional art mover and suspended in its tube as seen here. Here it is in its undisclosed top secret art storage facility. <laughs> the tube was kept suspended until they could safely unroll the painting and lay it flat. When the painting was safely unrolled, they removed the facing and inspected its surface. And here you can see the canvas deformations in the center that they hoped would, would relax with uh, gravity and time. Once they removed the facing, a new facing was applied with a synthetic resin, no more wheat paste, to stabilize the paint layer. And this will hold the paint layer in place for the next treatment process. You can see in the background some weight is being applied to the more stubborn deformations on the canvas. Trustees of the WCPA were able to visit the painting while it was still being refaced. Here we have from the left Stan Saperstein, Michael Matrano, uh, our current president on the far right, Ken Ritchie, along with Chris. The painting is very discolored from dirt, tobacco smoke, and old varnish. Um, the marks from the, but the brilliance of the color, it will be revealed with cleaning and the marks from the old facing will also be removed. Here are a few images I took on that visit. This photo shows a small cleaned area. Here's a close-up of General Washington. This is a close-up of a soldier. You can also see some discolored retouching from an earlier repair. And here's a close-up of an injured soldier wearing a fur cap. As you're well aware, there have been many distinctive in images of the famous crossing. Here is one by Courier and Ives. Another by folk artist, J.O.J. Frost. Another by local artist, Lloyd Garrison, the original of which hangs in the State Park's current visitor center. And of course, the world famous image created by Emanuel Leutze. Um, there's a great copy of this in the Pennsylvania Washington Crossing Historic Park. I very much encourage you to go see this. I recently visited this original in its home at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and uh, where despite having seen reproductions of it my whole life, I was extremely moved when I stood in front of this painting. And that was the whole point. This piece was created as a piece of propaganda in the hopes of encouraging liberal reform in Europe. No one cares that it depicts a clear day on the Rhine um, or that the flag depicted doesn't, didn't exist at the time of the event. It's a heroic depiction of America's D-Day and it stirs the heart and inflames the spirit. The Harding mural also promises to be very stirring. It not only features the boats and the water, it shows the troops, the artillery, the horses lining up on the Pennsylvania bank of the Delaware. It gives a wonderful sense of the scale of this enormous and treacherous operations which involved 2,400 soldiers, 
18 cannon, and 75 to 100 horses. And only a military, a combat artist like Harding could have captured this scene so beautiful. We so look forward to the day when it's installed in the park's new visitor center museum as seen in this artist rendering. The museum is scheduled to begin construction this either autumn or winter of this year. Uh, for now, the mural is safely refaced and re-rolled and being held in its high security storage facility. And restoration is scheduled to begin very, very soon. In January of this year, we sent out a press release to raise awareness about the piece, and we had a great response. It was picked up by numerous print and online outlets, including the Washington Post and the Philadelphia Inquirer. It was also featured on Channel 6 ABC News out of Philadelphia. <laughs> There's Pat showing off. And uh, this was uh, really exciting. The stories brought a lot of donations, but more importantly, we believe they've raised awareness of the mural and the beautiful state park that will be its home. It's our hope that the park's new visitor center museum, graced by this amazing mural, will bring visitors back to the park along with their support for this amazing green and historic space that is a true Mercer County gem. The park encompasses much that is vital here in Mercer County, our rich and our varied history, our amazing recreational resources, and our environmental treasures are all here. The WCPA, as Friends of the Park, is proud to support it with projects such as the Harding Mural, as well as our Washington's Landing event in New Jersey, featuring the 1st Rhode Island Regiment each December, our free guided history tours, which are recommencing next week. Go to the website and get your tickets. They are free. Our driving and walking tours that are available on our website or at the visitor center. Our trail steward volunteers who are now more than 50 strong. Our Tai Chi and yoga classes by the Delaware. And our work with the George Washington Memorial Arboretum. The park has undergone many challenges in the past decade, including flooding from Hurricane Irene in 2021, the destruction of thousands of ash trees thanks to the emerald ash borer and a devastating tornado that ripped its way down the park's famed Continental Lane in 2020. We work every day to help mitigate that damage and bring the park back to once, what it once was. But the B WCPA is nothing without our members who give us financial support, as well as the numbers we need to apply for grants and corporate donations. We hope you'll consider joining us and supporting all we do. Visit us at uh, www.wcpa-nj.com to learn more about what we do. Join our mailing list for park news or maybe even purchase a membership. Pat and I thank you so much for listening to this tale of buried treasure. It's been an honor to spend this time with you and we look forward to your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's like there was one woman who was asking questions throughout it, and you would, I mean, not two minutes later, you would answer them. Like, how did it oh, end up in oh, the <laughs> Is she going to mention Lutza? Are we going to see a comparison? Uh -huh. And I'm like, did you help them with this outline? Because you're all over it. <laughs> um, it really is amazing. And I guess one of the things um, I was wondering, I, let me remind our um, attendees first that if you do have questions, please enter them into the chat and we can, um, I can pose those to our presenters to try and field. Uh, when you did the press release kind of announcing the discovery, what was one of the most surprising um, things that you got back from people? Because once you hit that press release, I mean, you're, you're reaching all these people who might have some knowledge that you didn't know. Um. I, well, my thought was when, when I first learned of the mural and I knew who George Harding was, like I said, and I, I thought it was a pretty big deal, but you don't know until it gets out there. And um, Annette really knows how to write a press release and send the picture, but what happened, and I know what happened, I'm being in this business a long time. I told friends and family about it and, and everybody was like, oh, whatever. But the minute they saw the picture and the size of it yeah. and that newspaper article, then they're like, oh, wow, that's so cool. I didn't realize it was so big. I, you know, then everybody got excited over it. So I, I, 
I was hoping that would happen, but I wasn't sure. So it was really quite thrilling. Yeah, I was just thrilled to see that there were so many people from all over the country that were caught up in the story. And that was well, and you so read great. about it, you know, you read the dimensions, but then the picture with the four people standing, I mean, it just puts it in uh, that was did it. lucky that, oh, that, that wow. that's what did it. Yeah. And you know, I didn't even get to see that. I saw it for the first time when Annette sent it to me because, you know, I'm I'm away from this part of it now. It's 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 with the state, it's with their with the friends group. And so I, I was I was really I was really thrilled. I try to imagine it from reading about it, but um, it was exciting to see it. So one of the questions that came in was, what was your thinking um, when you yourself first realized what you thought you had found? Um, again, I think um, I, I, I think we all got on the same thought process when I when I discussed it with Annette and the, and the historians at the park. Wouldn't it be cool if it actually made it to the new museum? But after I saw the pictures of it in the basement still, I honestly wasn't sure it was salvageable. I mean, I, I thought that had to be totally destroyed by mice and, and I wasn't, it was thrilling to find out that it could be saved. Um, so I, I, I think that answers your question, so. Yeah, we well, were and, on tenter hooks for a long time, yeah. really a long time before yeah. we could get in there to have you know, it was all we could do not to for Pat and I to go over there and just just let us just let yeah, us just I, a peek, I, just a peek. I actually try to talk the the, the historian at uh, Ringwood State Park to can I please just take at the same thing go in the basement and just see just if it's salvageable. Um, but it was just it was just one of those odd things that we, you would you're dumbfounded that it's still there. I was sure that it, we would unroll it and a, a million silverfish would come flying out yeah, from yeah, every direction yeah, yeah. and there would be, and the, it would just be flakes of, of paint everywhere. Well, and you kind of wonder about the wheat paste. I mean, to me, that just, it just screams, come and eat me. Yeah. And another thing I've been looking for, and again, if any of the audience um, knows anyone or could spread the story, there may be people still who live who were there that day. Mm. And, and I would really like to talk to um, them about it and um, learn more about awesome. it in that respect, because um, that would be really exciting. Uh, most of the people I've located are, have, have passed, but there might be people still alive. Remember that the conservative group is now defunct. There's no images of it. There also may be some old um, postcards of the interior of the theater where you could see the mural in place over the lobby um, by the staircase. And I haven't found any of those yet. And, I've, and I have a lot of people helping me, but we haven't uncovered any yet. So someone might have some somewhere. So Patricia, what's the best way if someone does want to get a hold of you? Should they go through the Washington Crossing Park uh, website? Um, sure, can they could do that. Through that, um, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Just for and, the sake uh, of ease. Or, yeah, that would be fine. Um, I have lots of people saying they're very excited to see it when it goes into the new uh, Washington Crossing Visitor Center, and I think you said it's going on the New Jersey side. Yeah. Right? Yes. And yes. When, you might have said the date that it's uh, that it's open. So it's going. It's definitely going to be done in plenty of time for 2026, and the, which is the semi quincentennial. Yeah. Uh, I had to learn that word, and it just rolls off my tongue now. The <laughs> semi quincentennial, which is the 250th um, anniversary of the crossing, and of so many things. Very neat. Um, so well. It's scheduled to be to the shovel should go in the ground at the end of this autumn or the beginning of uh, September. Okay. Winter. I thought you had said it earlier. I just wanted to reiterate it for, for everyone again. Um, I have someone who's saying they, they appreciate the presentation, very informative. He's the new site manager. Or I'm sorry, she is the new site manager at the Benjamin Temple House in Ewing, and she looks forward to sharing what you learned, um, what she learned from this meeting oh, nice. tonight really uh, when she meets okay. with her group tomorrow. This is uh, this is an interesting question. Are you going to be able to take photos or kind of document the restoration process? They will have as it to happens? drag me out of that 
studio kicking yeah. and screaming. I will be taking photos and sharing them whenever I can. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that will go in, as I mentioned to Annette, um, coming from a museum background, they'll, there'll be an object file and a, a file of everything that's done and the research gathered on the painting. And um, so it, it should be available for researchers at the new park. So there's complete provenance and, um, yeah, and well, history, the whole story will be there for future researchers because there's, um, there's no reference to this painting um, in any of the other catalogs of Harding's work. Huh. So that's that's why we need to find out more about it. And uh, to the woman's question, I was thinking about it when she mentioned mentioned the Loitza painting. Um, one of the thing Harding did, he had the, he went about this work in the same way he did his other works. Is he actually did research at the um, Pennsylvania Historical Society, and he he said that he borrowed original costumes and he studied the muskets. So when he painted this image, he would get it historically accurate. So that's the difference. He painted this as a real drama piece and to have it be historically accurate as as best as he could. And again, with his um, background as a combat artist, you can see that intensity in the work, and and that's that's what that's what makes it special. And the fact that it's going back to New Jersey Park Museum, where it was originally intended, it yeah. comes full circle. So it's kind yeah. of the, I like that part of it too, the story. It, yeah. yeah, just the the angle that he did does, and I mean, because the angle's like face on, I mean, it's head on. And the, the, de his, the detail is just phenomenal. And I think that's gonna be exciting about the restoration process is that detail work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're really intrigued about some of the faces on that painting. That's just, some, yeah. you know, they, they look like, they look like people, they don't look like heroes. They look like farmers and, you know, people. carpenters <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> you and me. They look very <laughs> tired. <laughs> 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 Well, again, you've gotten just lots of kudos and thank yous and, and just very informative. Um, and your excitement is palpable. So I hope this <laughs> drummed up some excitement as well and that people will come out to the park and see it and see everything else that you have to offer because it really is a treasure um, yeah. just right down the road from us. So <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful park. Um, and I do want to remind everybody that this is recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel. Uh, so stay tuned to that. I will send a follow up email directing you to our YouTube page so you'll be able to find it. Um, I want to thank both of you so much for the presentation and taking the time to talk to us. I know you're both busy. I have to thank Laura, thank who's behind the scenes, making sure everything runs smoothly. Thank you, Laura. And I have to thank, thank Kathleen Nash from our Ewing branch, who is the one who actually reached out to you to set up the presentation. So I have okay. to give a big shout yeah. out to her as well. Yeah. So thank you so much to everybody thank for coming you. this evening, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.